Hello fellow herders of the loo and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another session of the PAB meeting. The PAB, the parentheses affected by the blue, is a monthly gathering where I like to uh, help you um, solve any of the hobby problems. We all have issues with the hobby. We all have things that are more complicated than for us than uh, than others. And this is a perfect place for you to ask questions and I will try to answer them as best as I can. But before we start, uh, news you ha may have noticed that past week there wasn't any video and this week there isn't any painting video, this is just the PAB. So uh, I, th I thought that maybe a small explanation would be at hand. So um, life sometimes get in the way and it's hard for me to to just put up videos to the normal rate, but a new video is coming, I promise. Uh, the next video is this little oh, <laughs> this little guy here. Um, I'm really proud of him. It's, it was so much fun to paint. I've always loved Squigs, and this was a real joy. You can see in, in all his glory here, uh, making the rounds. And uh, this video will be coming next Friday. Sorry, uh, I just couldn't put it up earlier. It's already filmed, and I started editing today, so I hopefully will have hopefully no it should be done by next Friday yeah there you go very nice so that's coming next Friday I also have a couple more projects um, in the meantime so I just bought an airbrush this is my first was I'm, I'm not that that's a bit of a lie it's actually my second airbrush the first one I bought when it was much much younger and it was one of those crappy Chinese, you know, generic airbrushes. But this one is a nice one. And uh, I, my first intention is not to use it for the channel, uh, just for me for base coating and varnishing and those kind of stuff. But if you are interested in like a blog video about setting setting it up, uh, starting with it, dilutions, how to manage all of that uh, with a simple project, maybe you will be interested in that. Just leave a comment and I will be glad to do it. And apart from that, um, these days uh, I've had another student working for me in a private workshop. He, this wa today was the first day, and uh, tomorrow will be the second day, and he will be back to Germany. He came all the way from Germany to here just to do some classes with me, which I'm extremely honored about that. And he is learning how to paint an NMM, and he's doing really well. I post some photos on Instagram when we are done once we are done so if you're interested in some classes uh just let me know uh, you can ask any questions about that and i will let you know whatever prices or whatever you want to know just put a comment in the chat and i will be glad to answer um and also um i had an idea for a video oh chelsea said he should, uh he wants an eyebrush video it's fantastic so I've had an, an idea for a video, but I want some feedback from you to see if you are okay with me, uh, with that idea, sorry, and as that um, we are very, very near 50,000 subscribers, which is mind-blowing, mind -blowing. and I thought that maybe I could make a video about how I make these videos, so my setup, how I work, uh, what's my workflow, and all that stuff, so if you're interested in that, that would be awesome, but... I also had an idea of asking a smaller uh, YouTubers, a smaller painting YouTubers, uh, to um, to send me like send me the link to their channel. I will select like about ten or, or so, and I will just go them as I do with the with the uh, Royal Retinue review. I will go through all all their channels and maybe give them some pointers, some feedback on what they can do to uh, improve the quality of the videos like practical uh, feedback I, I'm, I'm not planning to be mean or anything just going to be like um, like solid advice like uh, try to find a new mic try this for editing your audio uh, those, that that kind of uh, useful feedback um, or how to engage with the uh, community whatever to see if I can make them better and uh, you find that interesting and you know some channels that uh, may be good for this, uh, link them in the chat or um, send them a message and tell them to contact me uh, so I can talk to them if they are okay with that because I don't want to do this. If the, um, if the channel uh, 
uh, if the channel creator is not into this kind of stuff. So if you know of a channel that would be into this, let them know or let me know and I will contact them and I will work on that video with them, which I think would be a good idea to spread those less known channels. So please uh, keep them for channels with less than 10,000 subscribers, please uh, link them and down or uh, send them a message and tell them to or just send me a message or send them them a message and tell me to to review them and i will do very gladly so uh, with that out of the way i think it's time for the pav so uh, start putting your questions into the chat and i will be very glad to answer them so let's start with the uh, comments okay uh good evening from poland good evening i'm not trying, even going to try to pronounce your name sorry i, I, I would i'm going to destroy it <clears throat> okay Amy handsome hello chelsea very happy to hear you hello team glad to have you here as always uh chelsea yes i need an average video i have one a good one apparently and i have no idea where to start well i I may do it. I have, I have uh, a couple of cameras in my workshop, so I may. I have my airbrush set up there. I have just sort out the the airflow from my compressor into the into the two positions that I want my airbrush to be. So that may be a good idea to just try to film something with it. So yeah, I, I might do it. Uh, eight points on me, me, yeah. Uh, send me a message when we will talk about it and as, as always i'd be very glad to review your channel mate but you already know i i like what you do so <laughs> whatever um anton any updates on the online lesson possibilities well it seems that i can do that so if you want some online lessons send me a, an email uh maybe you do already did uh i've i've not yet done any so uh expect some problem solving occurring and it's not like i won't be able to uh like give you a physical feedback but i will try my best i promise to make you uh improve and to show you what i do i will probably just get me what you want to paint and we will talk about this. so yeah send me an email and we will talk about that uh phil burnby thanks for your all your work on i'm older guy who does this hobby alone your bits are great resources for learning and encouragement. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate that. <coughs> Chelsea, you are too nice. I just enjoy uh, just in all the channels to celebrate your success. I wonder my painting life, uh, how I do what I do. Video uh, with an army parade style. And yeah, the, 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 the issue with the army parade is I don't have a place to display my whole army. <laughs> That's a big issue. So uh, if you don't mind doing it unit by unit, I have no issues with that. Team Orange, what happened to Croak? I saw playlist markers and cancelled. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, I I may, once I have my airbrush um, set up, I may do like a, a basic airbrushing, maybe shade and then finish it with a brush. But uh, for now, Croak is sitting on a box down there and I don't plan to touch it. I, I, I'm, firm, I'm a firm believer in not doing things that you don't like to do so i'm not i wasn't liking that so I, and i know i don't want to suffer uh unnecessarily so for the time being croak is being cancelled james griefs hey juan any idea if and when are you going to do a night hunt conscious video as part of the your aos series well I may do one, but I already did something very similar. Uh, you see my how to paint ghost videos. I don't just use contrast paints. I also use um, some uh, nihilac oxide and some, uh, uh, I think I use for the glazing, I use, um, I can't remember the name, Way Watcher Green, but you can change Way Watcher Green for other colors and it will work very well. But if you want like a box shot, that is also coming. I have enough Nighthound models to do a box shot type uh, video. So expect that as soon as I can make it, basically. Sounds good, it will. Thank you very much. That would be awesome. Also, Anton, um, about the about the, about the the classes, please have in mind that you need to have a good setup so I can see what you're doing. So if you don't, if you can't show 
uh, well what you're doing. If you don't have a good camera or a good way to show me what you're doing, I cannot help you. So have that in mind, please. Board Game Dungeon. Hi from Switzerland. Any suggestions about uh, getting out of a rut and not improving? I'm, uh, I would really like to make some progress. Feels like I've been painting the same way for too long. Well, that's probably because you have been painting the same way for too long. That's a very common problem. So you just you keep practicing and practicing and practicing and you don't improve. And that's because you don't move out of your comfort zone. It's a very common problem. So what you want to do is try something that you think you cannot do and try to do it. And if you fail, don't worry. Just try again and again and again and again and again until you are... Um, until you are proficient with, with that and until you solve it. You need to move out of your comfort zone. You will get better when you try, actively try to get better, trying things that you think you are not ready to do. That's the way to do it. What break that barrier for me, which I was a bit stuck in, was uh, trying to learn NMM. And that process of trying to learn uh, non-metallic metal broke my barrier completely and and once I realized I could do it and it wasn't that difficult and I could blend very small spaces, very dramatic changes, my whole uh, painting changed. So try, my suggestion is something that you think you cannot do like NMM or like other stuff, try to do it and once and, and, and try and try and try and try until you figure it out. And once you do, you just try with another stuff and just keep improving. Hope that helps is not uh, it's a very complicated question to answer but the the answer is that is very simple is you are stuck because you're doing always the same and you won't improve until you try to do something different you try to do something that you think you cannot do phil brumby i'm paint on models from the 80s and 90s those are the best uh, do you feel models are better today and something i should try giving and just learning yes Models today, especially Games Workshop models, compared to the 80s and 90s, are much better. Miles better in terms of definition, sharpness, uh, detail, a clarity of the sculpt itself. Um, and also, plastic is easier to paint than metal. So I suggest you, if you, I don't know what you, what you like to paint, but trust me here, for me, the best test subjects to, to learn to how to paint and to improve is painting Primaris Space Marines or Stormcast Eternals. Get a box of either and paint them and you will love them. Chelsea, uh, the Craven King. I want to paint the chair like it's made of out of emerald. I have no idea what color to the main ghostly side. Ghostly that I will stand against the chair but not clash. What's the Craven King? I don't know what the Craven King is. Let me look that up. Let me look that up. Craven King. Oh, it's that guy floating with the ghosts on the other side. Okay, that's very interesting. That's a good. That's that's a cool mini. You know what? I may buy that mini and paint it just because I think it's very cool. I'm not sure I will do the ghosties floating around, but maybe just the Craven King itself could be a cool mini to do. And uh, yeah. So, but if you want to do the. The chair, like it's made out of emerald, uh, you can start with uh, Incubi Darkness. And you can highlight that using uh, Cabalite Green or Savary Green. It's one of the... Wait, wait a second. Okay, yeah, it's Cabalite Green, it's darker one, so you highlight that with Cabalite Green. You can do just a like a basic dry brush all over with Cabalite Green. Then you move into Cyber Green, and then you move into something like um, like uh, Gauss Blaster Green, and that will give you a cool, very cool jade. And you can do some uh, lines like like it like it was like Marvel. That would can work very well, and you just have to do a richer shade with black, and it will be a very cool looking jade. Uh, oh, but you, but <laughs> yeah, but I have no idea what to do. The main ghosty ghost side ghosty that will start out against the chair, but not clash. I will just recommend you do them like a classic white ghost. That's the best solution. And I think they did them with red tops. Yeah, 
I, I would do just that. I would do the the underside, like, like the lower part of the ghost, um, like white, like I did in my ghost video, and the tops of the ghost red, and that will that will come uh, come like that that burgundy, that very dark burgundy, desaturated color, and I think it will fit very well with with the uh, um, emerald uh, looking or the jade looking chair. So that will be, I will probably start with uh, Mechanicus, then I will do something like Flesh Tears Red, which looks amazing over uh, Mechanicus on the Grey. And then you can just highlight it using, that looks like probably it was Daka Red, and then uh, probably you, can, you will want to start with something like Corn Red, then it was Daka Red, then Tax Score Fur. Uh, and then you will probably want to move into Squeak Orange and some Kisla Flesh for the final highlight, probably. That will be my my go-to uh, colors for that. I will I will need to probably tweak it after uh, trying to do it, but that's, I think there will be a cool uh, color scheme. And yeah, Anton, yeah, uh, we will need if you want to do the online uh, tutoring, we need like uh, a live camera coming from you. So I need to see uh, live what you're doing and very as clearly as possible, so I can correct. Or I can tell you, well, I don't like that, or try to change that. It's very important. Adrian cares. Hey, brother, have you even made the display board? I'm not sure where to start and how big. I'm horrible doing uh, terrain, so no, I haven't ever, I haven't even done a a display board, and I don't know how to start either. Uh, probably the best person to ask would be Ben Venturella, which is very adept with that. I think he has a couple of videos on. Uh, about this about this this playboard so go watch them and maybe they will uh, give you an idea or two but i'm guessing that starting with a frame of, of some kind like a piece of wood that it's the size that you want would be the, the best start and just um, what i would do probably is um make a drawing of what i want in that display board and then start constructing the terrain and then think about the 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 rest basically andreas kendorp in a rut try to try searching youtube for comic books time I mean, it, and it's repenting it's heavy black lightning takes you far away from normal style try that yeah uh, if you want to try that that is a very good thing to try trying new things is the best way to improve wolf hi Juan. i was wondering if you varnish your models to protect them once you have finished painting them if so, what warnish would you recommend? Yes, I do. If I do, if I'm, if it, if they are for gaming, uh, I do, hundred percent. I use uh, monitorium varnish from GW. It works very well for me. But as with all spray varnishes, and this is not just for that, all spray varnishes, buyer beware. They can, they are very tricky, and they can mess you up. So be very careful which why you spray them, warm the can very well. Uh, I always have like a test uh, mini, like a test subject, like a throwaway mini that uh, I, I painted a very long time ago. And I always have it nearby when I'm going to varnish. I And I spray the varnish over that mini first. And if it's if it's not clouding, if it's going well, if it's if it don't see anything weird, then I spray my <laughs> nicely painted models. So have that in mind. Um, and for display, I only use the ultra matte varnish from AK. Um, Amo Mic also does, a, uh, I think, lucky varnish or something like that. Any ultra matte varnish I use for display painting because I don't want any reflection that I haven't painted on. So I use that if my paints are a bit shiny or shinier than what I want. And that's it. Hey Juan, are you going to take a wreck during Christmas? I think in my first. Submission to the uh, uh, to the RRR was close to a year ago, so I need to start working on something. I hope it's impressive. Um, no, I'm not going to take a break. I'm just going to do the uh, the Royal Retinue review and this PAB uh, in December as well, without interruption. Uh, some videos may take a bit of a while to finish because, well, I still have a couple of projects work that I'm working on that I'm probably going to take me a bit longer than when I expected including this guy, which is for a video about how to paint for competition uh, from start to finish, like concept, um, color selection, um, color matching into an existing artwork, and how to paint the background, all that kind of stuff will be compressed into a single video about how to 
paying for competition and it's coming but this is going to take at least three months to finish i'm guessing two or three months till i get this done and the video done so it's a very long time project and i need time to paint so i may not do like a video a week but uh i i plan to keep making videos for sure <clears throat> What's it? Uh, sorry, I, I cannot pronounce your name. I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, Juan. Big thanks for your Stormcast Hollow Knight tutorial. This tutorial, fantastic color schemes. I recently purchased half of the minion, started collecting uh, and, and painting an army and, and a Stormcast army. Fantastic! I love that color scheme. That video was so much fun to paint. I'm really glad it inspired you. That's very, uh, that's very humbling. Thank you very much. I have already painted one of each uh, model type, Predator, uh, Pre Predator, Vindictor, Annihilator. Soon I will have uh, most of them done. That's fantastic. That's the way to go. Keep painting your army. I think it's going to look very cool. Cool, thanks. I do have a 4K camera, but I will need to tinker with my setup. Yeah. You have any questions about your your setup? Give me, send me an email and we can make like a test session where I can see if I can see clearly. And if everything works well, we can book another sessions for later on. So send me an email and we can work it out and I will try to help you with your camera settings and so on. So if you have a 4K camera, I think we can work with that. Chelsea, I like it. Thanks. Happy to help. Uh, Chelsea, uh, how do you combat the glossiness in inks? Let them dry and hit them with Ultramat. Where's my Ultramat? Ultramat varnish. The only varnish I trust. <laughs> this this will kill any shine up on anything. This is like magic. I've seen people having issues where it's uh, starting to like um, separate and kind of like uh, drying, like, like uh, some bits floating around dried. But I didn't have any issues with it. But again, um, Ammo Meek makes another version of this which works as well as I've heard. So, yeah. What? Wolf, awesome, thanks. I'm looking for display varnish, so the ultramat varnish might do the trick. Yes, for display painting, that's what you want. But have in mind that this, and when I say, when it's when they say ultramat, they are not kidding. It's just, it's ultramat. So don't, uh, you, you will have to uh, work on your contrast a lot so it shows very well because this doesn't forgive uh, anything. So uh, it's very unforgiving in terms of showing all the mistakes. And, and if you didn't go like uh, full on contrast, uh, it will it will probably show uh, like a bad result. So have that in mind. Uh, Chelsea, do you do seafood for Christmas? Uh, actually, I... Uh, Back when I lived with my parents, we did a lot of seafood for Christmas, but here when I live alone and uh, seafood is, I, we like it, but uh, we do more like uh, fun uh, family food stuff. So some sometimes I we we do like um, octopus, so we will eat, it's not seafood, well, it, technically it is seafood. Uh, we do a lot of octopus, we, we, which we really like, and maybe some, some king prawns also. Um, usually in a kind of salad so that's fun but yeah good question i like i love talking about food charlie rivers also uh, another one my favorite color is orange but all of the paints are pain in the ass <laughs> do you recommend using extra opaque heavy body no what i would recommend is you prime with what what i do want to paint orange now is prime with red one uh heated with a thin down um, green found orange and then work with that highlight with that I have a video about painting orange so give it a look just change the base code which I use dawn yellow for the video because uh, I haven't even tried the word Rayvon and just use Rayvon instead of dawn yellow and so follow those steps and you will have the perfect uh, orange in the jiffy apart from that if you want to paint it like traditionally <sighs> Yeah, I guess uh, move into a heavy body. Well, you will have better pigments. Look into cadmium pigments that will have more opacity. But again, have in mind that cadmium paints are toxic. So 
be very careful with that. You don't want to be leaking paint or leaking your your brushes with when you're working with cadmium paint. But apart from cadmium paint, even heavy body uh, paints will be a pain in the ass. So if you want to move into the oranges, look into into cadmium based or oranges and you will probably have much better coverage than with normal paints. But please be careful, Charlie. Um, board game dungeon. What do your live tutor sessions cost? So, um, for the, uh, if you if you if you actually come here and we do the the live tutoring sessions uh, here uh, with me uh, in person, that's um, about four hundred and fifty euros per day. Uh, it is a lot of money, but also have uh, that's about six to eight hours of a straight up a very intense painting. Also, the food usually comes uh, from my pocket, so. And it's a very nice food. Just ask Charlie or ask uh, Charlie is here. So ask Charlie if the food was worth it. So, um, yeah, uh, it's a lot of money, but I have to close my business. I, I am I don't do this professionally, so I have to close my business. I have to call all my clients uh, and I have to arrange a lot of things. So it's a bit of a pain. And and I think that's a fair price for my time. So have that in mind. If you want online sessions, we can talk about price because I, I honestly don't know um, uh, how much value I can do online. So I don't know if it will be worth it. So I need to study that personally. So if you want online sessions, um, send me an email and we can talk about that. But yeah, for uh, if you want to come here and stay uh, doing classes with me, for each day, which is about, again, uh, six to eight hours. Uh, you may think you can do eight hours, but the two people that have that have come here, when we reach the six hours a day, uh, they just said, I, I need to take a break. This is too much. So it's a very intense day of painting and you will learn a lot. So uh, again, Charlie, Charlie Rivers uh, just came here and stayed with me for two and a half days, basically. And he uh, went away very happy. So. Ask him if it was worth it. I think it is. That's uh, what, I, what I would say. Uh, the two persons that have come, they have all been very happy, and I'm very happy that they have learned a lot. So, uh, question regarding varnish. Normally, I use Citadel Monitorium varnish, but now with my Hollow Knights, the Ship of Blue Armor a bit shiny reflecting. I'm afraid matte varnish will destroy it. Yeah, that's a problem with all metallic armies. Um, Honestly, when I'm just have a, uh, I just use monitoring for all my armies. The problem is I don't have a full metallic army, so that's a bit complicated, and maybe I won't be able to help you. Monitoring is better than a straight up matte varnish for the metallics, so maybe test it. So maybe paint something quickly with the metallics and test monitoring and see if you like it. It's going to dull. It's going to dull them down, but. Um, but uh, it may not dull them down so much, so give it a try. Another option is uh, using, yeah, but that's all metallics. It, that those means are all metallics. But you can probably do, if you have an airbrush, you can buy the the Vallejo metal color varnish. It's not perfect, but it's probably the best option. And then do the rest of the details that are not metallic with a uh, regular uh, brush varnish. That would be the only option. If you don't like the look of the monitorium, but try the monitorium first. Because I, even though I know it does down metallics, I don't really care for my armies. I've never had any issues and I'm very happy with them. So give it a try. <clears throat> Chelsea, I spray. I spray my minis with a matte varnish after they are done. Should I invest in liquid varnishes so I can paint on gloss varnish on metal wet surfaces and matte on others? Yeah, if you want to add like glossy effects, you should. You, I think most people should have a gloss varnish around for their armies. It's very useful. So yeah, I do. I do think you should buy a gloss varnish. It's very. It is. It's very inexpensive. Just get the. The Vallejo gloss varnish is very good, and it will do you uh, a very good service. 
Phil, advise on varnishing, please. <laughs> Everyone wants to know about varnishing now. Advise on varnishing, please. In forums, everyone says Tesla.code, but that stuff is impossible to get in the UK. Yeah, it's impossible to get here. It's, you cannot get it in the European Union. I would like a matte finish. So you want a matte finish, like a properly matte finish, your only solution. Uh, you want um, a matte spray that, uh, like a matte finish that is consistent and not going to ruin your minis. Is probably to move into airbrushing. I'm sorry about that, but getting just get a cheap thirty dollars, thirty euros air air airbrush from Amazon or whatever. Those those cheap crappy ones, it will do well for just varnish, and just just varnish your minis with that. It's because all, all uh, I use monitorium, which is a bit satin. But if you want like pure matte, the only solution is just to get an airbrush, and uh, if you want to do it quickly, otherwise just brush varnish. Because I, I I actually tried the Army Painter uh, anti shine varnish and I hated it. So I don't do not recommend. I actually don't recommend any of the Army Painter sprays. I, I hated them. I bought a bunch and I hated them all. All of them. So yeah, not not for me. I know people uh, use them and they're happy with them, but I, that wasn't my my case. So I cannot recommend something that I didn't like. The Yungbo 670. Have you experienced? Have you experimented with a do-yourself contrast medium instead of using GWs? Uh, no, because uh, I've well, I have, and I've never gone to the same uh, results. Also, a bottle of contrast medium lasts for a very long time, so I see no point. If 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 a bottle of medium lasts me for a year, which probably does, this is the. This is the first medium that I bought. It's about, I think this is 30, um, this is, this is, uh, it was 24 milliliters. This is a 30 milliliter dropper and it's on here. So this is with all I paint with contrast for, for the videos. And it's, I mean, like maybe a third, uh, two thirds are still left in, uh, after all this time painting videos with contrast paints. Yeah. I mean, like. I, I I just don't see the 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 point on doing it. I tried it. I tried to 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 make it. I've seen videos and I've never liked the results as much as I do the proper medium. So I know it has to be some kind of um, weird chemistry. I'm guessing something like um, like a pouring medium of some kind, uh, which shrinks a lot when it dries. So maybe that with a mat matting agent, probably, but I, I'm just too lazy and that lasts for a very long time. So I'm not, not, not interested. Also, you just had a varnish question. I had, I had a lot of varnish questions in this session. I, I don't mind answering them. So, uh, add to them if you, if you, if you want eight points to start painting. Yeah. I would love to see, I'd love to do some videos with you mate. You should also jump into my stream sometime. It would be nice to have you on when I'm painting. If someone is streaming, I will always jump in. The problem is you, we haven't even met when I'm uh, painting. Uh, we haven't uh, coincide. Uh, so yeah, but I would love to Anthony just, you know, just, just send me a Facebook message. Anton, uh, Lumi uh, Question not on online tutorial. I have difficulties figuring out the amount of highlights towards the bottom of the body. I feel like often uh, do the mistake of going as f as far in highlights as I do on the top part of the mini. What are your thoughts on highlighting the upper part of the mini versus the bottom part? Well, that's a very interesting question. So if you follow the heavy metal style, you will do the same level of highlights all around. That's because they want to showcase the details of the mini as perfectly as possible. But if you want a realistic result, the 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 lower sections of the mini shouldn't be as shouldn't have as much highlight as the top part. So I would probably if you're doing imagine you're doing four four stages of highlighting. Like I I've I've done that quite uh, often. So uh, you have one, two, three, and four. I will probably go up to four for the top parts and anything that's facing down or it's in the lower sections, I will probably stop 
depending on what it is. If I want to get, take attention to it, I will probably stop at three. But if I don't want to uh, uh, gain much attention, I will probably stop at two, and I will give you a very good result. Try try it and uh, see if you like it. Borgen Dungeon favorite uh, paint color to paint. So uh, my favorite color to paint is yellow. A lot of people know that, and red. Yellow and red are my favorite colors to paint. And as for my favorite paint, I cannot choose one, but I will going to choose like a range. I'm going to choose the. Uh, Citadel Reds, all of them, they are the best Reds in the market, and I will stand for that uh, answer. By Citadel Reds, the best Reds in the market, for me. Uh, another question for Board Game Dungeon, which size brass from Rosemary do you use the most? Size 3, Series 33, size 3 is my workhorse. I also have a 2 and a 4. That I use for, uh, I usually base code with a four, and then I, if I need some like very thin lines or uh, thin richer shading in uh, difficult to access spots, I use the number two just because it's uh, it's smaller. But for the main painting and for eyes and everything, I use the the size three for everything. Uh, eight point seven. Then I would go with satin varnish. But yeah. Um, Listen to him, he knows what he's talking about. Anton, comment on the metallic plus varnish. What I do is just paint the first dark layer of metallics and everything else, then I varnish the minis, and after that I complete the metallic highlights. It's a very good um, uh, solution, actually. That's a very intelligent and clever solution. Thank you, Anton. Charlie, oh yeah, the foot is 40% of the... Charlie is talking about um, his experience doing the the one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Uh, yeah, uh, the food is 50% of half of the fun. The other one is enjoying painting with Juan and not only learn, but love a lot. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. We, we did have a fantastic time. Yeah. Chelsea Salisbury, is there a, a way to stick a static grass up without actually a static applicator? I don't know. Uh, I have, I've never tried to do it. Um, probably if you have something that has a lot of static electricity you could probably make it stand up like i know maybe you maybe you inflate a balloon just rub it on your head and then try it on your on your uh, uh tops that may work maybe don't know uh maybe ask uh, L uh luke aps for that he's uh he knows about that more than i do <laughs> that's for sure uh, Lionheart 09 GM. Any plans to paint up some Maggot King stuff for your heavy control series? Yes, I've said this before, and I will say it again. I have no issues. Every single faction of both games will get at least one video. Uh, so yes, Maggot King is coming. I love those models. Uh, I loved painting the 40k Nurgle version. Uh, Nurgle. Uh, Marines, so I'm going to love to paint the Maggot King. So stay tuned because it, it is coming. Also, um, if you want something done for the channel, like uh, a specific uh, army or something, the best way for to get them to so I do them faster is uh, send me an email and actually send me the physical mini. So you send me like a mini, uh, preferably uh, if you can, please not glued. So like uh, the, the, the just cut the pieces of the sprue and send them to me. And I promise you, I will end up painting them. Maybe not in the color scheme that you want. I will just do the box art colors first because that's the most useful video. That's what most people want to see. But but yeah, if you want something done, so if you want me to paint some maggot kin, get in contact with me. You have the email in the, in the uh, description. Send me an email and just send me the maggot kin and I will paint it. That will be the best uh, way to ensure I those get first into the queue because if I don't have to buy the minis, that's a plus for me and a plus for you. Team Orange, uh, speaking about Army Painter, the only decent thing I own for them is Matt White. Surprisingly, in my test, it's behaved better than Vallejo's Whites. I have no issues with any white. Uh, a lot of people like to crap about about this. What is my white? about this little guy this is ceramite white i love this paint i've loved this paint since i uh, uh used this since i 
bought it. Uh, but a lot of people uh, didn't like it. This is the best white that I've used for a long time. It's one of my favorite whites. I also use, uh, I don't have Vallejo white, but I have Chimera white, which is also really good. And I, I, and I have um, a white ink, which I also use quite a lot. So, uh, but if army painter white is good, uh, fantastic. I also heard that uh, the, the Pro Acryl white is also very good. So that's another option. Tom Reynolds, uh, Phil uh, Barmy, Umbro matte acrylic varnish gives a more matte finish than dot coat. So there you go, Umbro matte acrylic varnish. Try it. Al Jean, what will your legacy be? How will you be remembered, or will or will you? What will you leave behind for your successors? I don't know, Al Jean. <laughs> All my videos, I guess. <laughs> um. Eight pointed star. Uh, thanks. Could you recommend any satin varnish? I can actually. AK <laughs> satin varnish. I really like AK varnishes a lot. So uh, try it. Or uh, if you don't, if you can't find AK. Try finding. Um, this is for airbrush. But if you want for spray, I cannot help you. But if you want for airbrush, AK satin varnish or Am Ammo Meek Lucky Varnish uh, Satin, which also works very well. You go. Uh, the Yumbo, thanks for your uh, answer. You made a good point about not needing enough uh, for a DIY. Uh, another question Could you mix ink plus contrast medium to make your own colors? Yes, you can. That's the best way to make new uh, use of contrast paints is to use high quality acrylic inks and just mix them with contrast medium. I think just have in mind that just by nature you are diluting more uh, an already diluted product, which an ink is already diluted. So you're probably not going to be able to do like super strong hues, like something like shyish purple. I doubt you can do that with inks plus contrast because you are going to dilute the con the ink more, and instead of just using the raw pigments like the inks do, and then mix them with the contrast medium. Uh, you are taking a product that is uh, raw pigments mixed with a medium and then adding another medium. So uh, have that in mind, but yes, inks plus conscious mediums works really well. But get high quality artist inks just for the better result. Who? Look APS? Yes, look APS. Uh, can I just send an email? Not about anything specific, just to chat. <laughs> If you want to send me an email to me, yeah, you can send me an email anytime you want, Chelsea. You don't have, you, you don't need to ask. If, you, if you're talking about Luke, I'm guessing you can send an email. He looks he looks like a very approachable guy. Uh, try it. <laughs> very good question, Chelsea. Are you interested in oils at all? Um, actually, I just bought like ninety euros in worth in oil paints from. Um, uh, AK the the Abelton uh, series. So yes, uh, I will be interested in oils very soon. <laughs> Stay tuned for that because uh, uh, I, I am I, I do plan of making like an uh, uh, oils for beginners video, like what to do. Like I'm essentially also a beginner, so like going into the journey with me trying oils for the first time. I think that would be a cool video. Anton, is the only way to get super smooth layers to go back and forth with the glazes with a lot of time? Or do you have any tips how to get better smoothness with lesser uh, time use? Yes, you want to go very smooth transitions with very less time to have two options, an airbrush or oil paints. That's basically it. Uh, any blending with acrylic, well, technically you can use loaded brush, which is if you haven't, uh, if you know what uh, loaded brush is, um, uh, is a technique developed, or at least in the miniature world, has been uh, made famous by uh, Ben Comets. So uh, it's basically you load the whole brush with a thin, thin down paint, and in the tip you put a very intense paint of the, of the other like. In in the body should be like the darker color, and the tip should be the lighter color of your gradient. And you place the tip, and you start moving back and forth, back into into the into the uh, shadows, 
and it will uh, it will mix um, while you are painting. So it will get you like a like a, a instant gradient. Also, try and um, watch. Uh, I kind of have forgot his name. Oh, I'm horrible with names. Try uh, looking for videos on how to wet blend. Wet blend is another option, but like easy and reliable, an airbrush and oil paints. That's that's the only solution. So you want like super quick, smooth blends. Those are the two options. Like no, with uh, fail-proof methods. And um, if you want to take your time, acrylics, just glazing. You can stipple them. You can go the flaming way and do like a million thousand layers, uh, like like b sketch all your values and then blend those values with a thousand layering lines. I don't like it, but if you, if you are behind, if you want to do that, do that. Or you can just stipple your way like people like... Um, I forget all the names always. I know them and I always forget them. Like... Uh, Dave Cowell, so you can just stipple your way into infinity and and blend everything with just very thin little dots all over. Uh, it takes a very long time, but that's another option. Jay Carib, do you have any tips on gray and MM recipes? So if you don't want to use my steel recipe, which I I have in the channel, and you want like a pure just flat gray. My advice would just go as just as simple as base coat with a mid gray, something like Mechanicus Standard Gray, and then just highlight. You can highlight either using the GW Gray, something like Downstone, that being Stratum, Uthuan, and then shading down using black, or you can just shade down using black and shade up using mixing white into a Mechanicus Standard Gray, and there you go. Also, I've seen a lot of people using uh, something like Ice Yellow for the highlights on gray and NMM to add more light. That can also work, but that like into the mid into the mid tones, and then for the final stages, just mixing white into that. So that's another option. Think about that. Uh, but yeah. Also, what I like to do when I do a steel NMM is to add the colors that are around it, glaze down. So if you have like an um, like an armor here and a red cape here, paint some red into this side, into this side here, like it's reflecting the red from the cape. That also works very well for uh, to 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 sell the effect. Andreas, anyone else feel like all GW whites dry quickly and get clumpy in the bottle? They do. the The thing is with ceramite white and with corax white, is that they had so much pigment in them that it will just bind together into a ball. Uh, like, it, it has too much pigment. But if you get them to work well, they will cover better than any other white that you have ever seen. It's amazing. Corax white covers like a dream. But yeah, Satin Varnish is good. Say so 8 point to start painting. Yeah, Vallejo Satin Varnish is good. Chelsea Silvery, Jesus Swan's legacy lives on with us. The uh, 30 people watching now. And nearly 50k who wait in with anticipation for his net installment in our painting journey. Thank you very much, Chelsea. You are amazing. Once video told me uh, told me how to paint, how to paint. So when I'm older and teaching my grandkids how to do it with their fancy drones, I will be telling them to thank you, my love, and save your one. I love you, Chelsea. Uh, Andreas, um, Buddha painting is the master of loaded brush. Yes, that's, uh, so he doesn't make videos anymore. He does. But for his Patreon, so Ben Comets doesn't do um, like free to watch videos anymore. Sadly, it's a big loss for the whole of the community that cannot afford to uh, participate into his Patreon. But he, if you want to watch his videos, he still makes them for his Patreon, and they are very, very good, extremely high quality. The guy is very good, so if you want to support him, uh, do it. Just look for Ben Comets Patreon and uh, join. So see on the small areas doing an MM, how do you stop it looking like black mid-tone highlight stripes? There's a, there isn't a lot of room. Yeah, it's very complicated. So you need to 
it's 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 very hard. What I will what I do in very tight spaces is just uh, get my magnification goggles and go very slowly and try to stipple uh, the transitions uh, smooth. It's better than glazing such small spaces. So a stippling, I just thin down whatever paint I want to use for the blending. Usually uh, uh, a half or halfway onto the two stripes. And I mix it, I mix it up with line and medium so the, the dots are thin but won't dry weird. And I just do those dots all around and try to blend it, try that. Uh, Jacob, thank you so much, Juan. Thank you for watching. Happy to help. Chelsea, have you seen liquid chrome gel paints? They are all. Uh, are they at all applicable for mini painters? I've seen the Molotov uh, paints. If you are talking about that, they look amazing. But the problem is, you. I don't know how well they will stand to weathering. I've seen um, uh, Adam Savage use use them for for a couple of projects. I think he did. This is not miniature painting, okay? This is a uh, cosplay. He did uh, a full-on uh, Iron Man, uh, the first Iron Man suit, the one that he builds in in the desert, and he painted it with chrome, multi chrome pens, like airbrushing it, of course, and then he shaded it using, I think, like the airbrush and, and inks, if I'm not mistaken, and it looked really good. So I think it could be applicable to miniatures, but. I think he also found the varnish that didn't affect it too much. So Woke Watch, um, if you haven't, uh, if you aren't so subscribed to the to the tested channel, just go go and watch all his uh, uh, all his um, uh, Iron Man costume uh, videos, and he will he's working there with those pens, and he he I think he says how he, uh, what varnish he uses. And how he applies it so it doesn't dull down the metal too much so that will be a very interesting uh, video to watch it's much larger but i think you can apply it into a smaller scale too anton does any undercoating make any sense if you want to paint with contrast paints in your opinion yes it does if you watch my videos uh my spooky videos so all the cursity videos and uh the vampires if you watch those videos i use senital priming and it works very well. It's fantastic. So it's a very good option. I don't do it for all my videos because I know not everyone can get a hold of some of the uh, sprays. So I try to minimize the use of the weird sprays uh, like sandy dust and I try to keep it to a minimum because I know not everyone can. So I I, I probably won't do many um, many more sanitar apart from the spooky videos with just uh, like a showcasing that you can do it if you want but yes it works very well what you can also do on top of the sanitar is do a, like a wash with thin down noon oil and then you can just do a dry brush with white and paint the contrast paint on top and it will look pretty good Raiko Sosa Fragiel what varnish can you recommend another varnish question that's awesome Paint new. Uh, is it possible to do it on regular brush? Everyone tell me uh, don't even bother and try an airbrush, and I don't even have one. Uh, thank you very much. So yes, you can you can varnish with your brush. It's going to take a longer time, but I highly recommend you get something like this. It works very well with the brush. Also works of course with an airbrush. This is AK Interactive uh, varnish. This is satin, but they also make a matte. And an ultra matte, but if you don't want to go the ultra matte route, which uh, that uh, and uh, considering you are new, I wouldn't recommend. You get a satin varnish for metallics and a matte varnish for the rest, and just use those with your brush, and you will get a good result. You don't need an airbrush, uh, and an airbrush is it's faster, but you don't need an airbrush. When Snithal priming, do you uh, have to do black, gray, and white, or you can just go from black to white? You can go from black to white if you want. Uh, gray in the middle helps with the transition being smoother, especially if you're using um, uh, spray cans. If you're using an airbrush, you can just do white straight from the top, and it will look fine. Uh, at least from my experience, of course. Kaltoy 3000, any tips for painting a dark blue coke, uh, cloak? Yes, I actually did one. 
uh, for my uh, one of the Bretonians uh, ladies that I painted. Um, I would probably start with something like Cantor Blue, which is my default blue for uh, a dark, like for a blue base base coating. I really like that paint, and I will start highlighting that with um, probably something like. Depending on the hue, but I like to use teals for highlighting blue, so I will probably go with my first highlight with something like Thousand Suns Blue, if I'm not mistaken. Then I will move into Temper Cloud Blue. Then I will probably do in you can do Bar of Blue or you can be brave and do something like Gauss Blaster Green for your final highlight and you shade it down with black. That will do a very good, nice blue cloak. Uh, Pablo is asking where uh, I am from uh, exactly, from from which part of Spain. I am from Bilbao. So the best part of the country. Uh, Anton, I'm really screwing up the varnish theme in this episode with different questions. I'm more than glad to answer any varnish questions. This will be the varnish episode. Um, K3 3000, any chance for a video tour on your painting setup? I always enjoy watching those. Yes, as I said in the intro of this uh, of this uh, PAB session, for my 50K um, celebration, I will show you how I record these videos, all my camera setup, nine lights, uh, how I paint, my painting setup in general, and I will try to give you a guide of, about everything else. So uh, stay tuned for that because it's coming. Um, well, it's, we've been here for about an hour, so if there, we don't have any more questions, I will just leave it. But if you have more questions, this is your time to put your final questions into the chat. And I will be very happy to answer them. Just remember that uh, next week, this chat is coming. I always I always do the wrong hand. This chat is coming um, on Friday, so stay tuned. This is a very good video. I had a lot of fun, especially finding out good recipes for the teeth. Um, and I'm very proud of the two different hues that you can see on the lips and on the gums. I think that's a very good uh, video and also use different colors to highlight the reds so they look more fleshy like. So I'm using a uh, flesh tone to highlight the red and I think it looks pretty good. So uh, stay tuned for this uh, coming up next week. And as always, if you know what, uh, some channels that may want uh, to be featured and, and have review, have a uh, Send and have them um, send feedback on how to make their channels better, how to improve their video quality, the sound quality, why I would invest next for their development. Just give me a, send me a message, or if you own a channel, just send me a, a, an email or a message through Facebook, and I will be very happy to um, very happy to answer it and work with you. Uh, Anton, last question: How important is, in your opinion, to get the different versions of conscious paint colors? For example. Both yellows, both purples, all blues, uh, very important actually. They are very different paints. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think it's a very important uh, thing to do. They are very different hues, and having them all makes you for, um, makes for a very good, uh, very uh, more uh, versatile palette. So yes, do it. Sorry, it was last time I did a test for orange. I sent out brown, pale sand and ivory and it makes it so easy so anything in that scale works yeah if you if you if you do brown a pale sand and ivory in a sunny manner and then you apply some orange on top it will be easier i f kind of remember vince venturella when he painted he did a video about orange and i think it was pretty good all his videos are pretty good but I also remember him doing orange for an army project. That's one of the painting an army in a, in a whole weekend videos. I think it was the little man, but I'm not sure. So check it out. And I think he uses the same, he uses browns and ivories for the base coat and like a sunny file with the airbrush. And I think he just does contrast paints on top and it looks pretty, pretty sweet. So that is to me, as, as well as painting yellow easy, painting orange easy is made easier with contrast paint so that would be my my personal recommendation for orange and it seems that that was the last question so uh, i had a re really great time in this varnish special pab and uh, thank you very much for watching thank you all for being here 
it's been a pleasure and i will be very happy if for the next month uh by in a, in in about a month time we have hit the 50,000 subscribers and then can make not only that special video but also a, like a pab special celebration video with the 50k subscribers which would be awesome so thank you all very much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one bye